Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this one we'll talk about the navigation display symbols of the Phoenix A320. The navigation display is manipulated by the EFIS control panel and on there you'll find different buttons and rotary um, selectors and we'll start off with having a look at that rotary knob in the middle where you can select different modes for your NAV display. So there's five different modes, starting from the left side, the LS Rose mode, so the eyeless Rose mode. Above that is the Rose VOR mode. Then further on, we have the Rose NAV mode. And then the ARC mode. And uh, last but not least, the so-called PLAN mode. When you select the Rose LS mode, the following NAV display depiction will appear. And so it's a top-down HSI view, where in the middle you have the aircraft symbol, you have the localize indication with the left and right deflection if you are not on the center. And on the right-hand side, you can see the glide slope scale, again, showing you if you are on the center or above or below the glide slope. On the top right corner there, you'll have the ILS frequency and the ILS identifier. Um, as soon as the ILS has been automatically identified by the system. Moving on, we have the ROSE VOR mode, which is similar to the ILS ROSE mode. And again, it shows you the offset from a top-down view um, from the dialed-in VOR radial. In this case, we are more than 10 degrees right of track. And in the top right corner, you have the frequency and the selected course and the identifier um, showing up. Next, we have the Rose NAF mode, and it's a 360 degrees all round view, top down of your flight plan route that you have inserted into the MCDU. And the advantage of this mode is that it's not limiting to the top half of the display, but you get a complete 360 degree view around the aircraft. And you'll see the difference when we come to the next mode, the so-called ARC mode, which shows the same flight plan information, however limited to the forward 90 degree left and right sector. And you can see that the aircraft symbol has actually moved from the center position down towards the bottom of the display. The last mode is the so-called plan mode, which is actually referenced to north um, and this helps you to scroll through the flight plan and check the whole routing that you have inserted into the MCU. Right, so here we are in the Phoenix A320 and you can see I've just selected the ILS Rose mode. This mode is actually not used that often. I mean, it's more raw data mode if the map mode has failed for some reason. Um, but since you get the localizer and glide communication also on the primary flight display, this mode is not really necessary. The same holds true for the VOR ROSE mode, which is a traditional HSI mode really. And since you get the raw data indications of your selected VOR or ADF needles, also on your NAF ROSE mode or ARC mode, the VOR ROSE mode has become somewhat obsolete. Anyhow, this video is on the topic of the NAF display symbols, which we shall cover now. Let's start from the top left corner, clockwise around the screen. So there we have GS standing for ground speed. And here the value is 494 knots. And to the right of that, we have TAS that stands for true airspeed. And that's the speed of your aircraft relative to the air that it's flying through. And the value is 435 knots. And so if you look at the wind component, which is below the ground speed, and that is derived from the ADIRS, which stands for Air Data Inertial Reference System. The value is 357 degrees with 63 knots. However, you have to realize that this value is referenced to true north. However, the wind arrow is actually based on magnetic north and it will appear when the velocity is more than two knots. So now the composition between true airspeed and ground speed actually makes sense, simply because the true airspeed is 435 knots that the aircraft is traveling through the surrounding air. 
And on top of that, you add the tailwind component in this case, um, giving you then a speed above the ground of 494 knots. If we actually had about 60 knots headwind component with a true airspeed of 435 knots, then of course your ground speed would be around 375 knots, so a lot slower. Now I've already mentioned that the wind is referenced to true north, however be aware that the compass rose that you see in these modes is actually referenced to magnetic north. Unless the aircraft is north of 70 degree north or south of 60 degrees south. Should that be the case, then the compass rose is actually referenced to true north. The yellow aircraft symbol that you see here on the NAV display is pointing directly up and coincides with the yellow line that you see on the compass rose, and that is actually called the lubber line. So the aircraft heading is 196 degrees magnetic. Moving back up to the display, we can see the message which shows which approach is inserted into the MCDU. And that message will show up when the flight phase is either descend, approach or go around, or the FMS phase is in cruise along the track distance to destination with less than 250 nautical miles. Moving now to the top right corner of the display, we typically have the information regarding the waypoint that the aircraft is flying to, which is also called the two waypoint, in this case VSUP. The magnetic track direction to that waypoint is 193 degrees, which you can also see on the compass rose showing up as a green diamond. Now, if you're wondering, the diamond is a little bit to the left of the center, so left of the, the pointing nose of the aircraft, and that is because of the wind, which is blowing a little bit right to left here. And that, of course, means that the aircraft is drifting a little bit left. And in this view, it makes sense. The aircraft is using a wind correction angle to stay on that flight planned route. Coming back to the top right corner here, we can see that the distance from the current aircraft position to the waypoint is 17.4 nautical miles. And the expected time to be over that waypoint is 20.06 Zulu. Let's come back to the full view here. And on the center, you can see the circles, these so-called distance circles. And so since we're on a 40 mile range right now, each of these circles is 10 nautical miles. On the bottom left and bottom right corner, we can see the NAV8 information. VUR1 being on the left side, VUR2 being on the right hand side. If you have actually selected an ADF on the EFIS control panel, then of course the needles would show a green ADF needle. If the VUR receives a DME information, that'll be shown below the identifier, here in this case 2.7 nautical miles. And if you actually tuned a VUR manually, you'll find a little M showing up next to the identifier. If the VUR was tuned automatically, then there would be no letter visible in the screen. Okay, so now let's have a look at a couple of symbols, arrows, pointers, circles, um, which could show up on a normal flight here on the NAV display. And the first error I want to talk about is this one here. It has a little leg which goes up and then the pointy arrow. And this simply means that it's a position where the aircraft will level off at the FCU selected altitude. Now it's in cyan color because that means it is armed just like alt blue. Should the arrow be magenta, then that would mean that the aircraft is not going to level off at the FCU selected altitude but at the altitude which is constrained in the MCDU flight plan. Next you may see either of these two arrows. It means that it's a position where the aircraft will continue to climb. Um, if it's in cyan, it means it'll start pretty much automatically because the climb mode is armed. If the arrow is white, it means it's a position where the aircraft would like to climb. However, the climb mode is not armed, so it will not activate automatically and you have to select the climb mode manually. 
Next you may find a circle on the flat plan with uh, boxed ETP and that simply means it's the equitime point. We'll find more detailed information under data equitime point and there it's defaulted normally to the origin and destination airport but you can enter different values so fixes, airports, waypoints to your liking. So that point defines the time which is halfway between the two defined waypoints and taking into account the entered wind data. Next we have our top descent error, simple white error pointing downwards. It coincides of course with the flight planned route top descent. Now it's white because it will not start a descent mode automatically. So if you do want to descend at that point you have to take action, um, select a lower FCU altitude and then use a descent mode like open descent, managed descent or vertical speed. Here's another example of a descent error. Uh, so behind that waypoint, which is restricted to flat level um, 100, the FMS wants you to continue to descend on its optimum path. But since the error is wide, you have to take action. So again, you have to dial in a lower FCU and then use a descent mode. This is particularly important when you look at your RNAV RMP approaches where you get to your final descent point. The white error means that the aircraft will actually not automatically descend. So in this case, for example, you would press the approach mode. So you can see final is blue, so armed. And then you have that cyan descent error, meaning the aircraft will automatically start its descent. Now let's talk about some errors which are very interesting and I'm sure some of you have wondered what those mean. You will see those lightning errors in a descent and those will show you the intercept point where the aircraft will meet the flight management guidance system um, computed vertical descent profile. Here's a quick illustration of uh, this profile. Um, so on the top part, you can see the FMS computed flight plan descent path. The aircraft is below that descent path. Um, however, the descent rate is fairly low. So there is a converging path. And at some point that path will then hit the FMS computed descent path. And there you have the so-called intercept point and uh, the lightning error will then show up on the navigation display. Same thing if the aircraft is above the FMS computed descent path and it has a fairly high descent rate, so high enough that the converging path will then intercept that optimum descent path at some point. Again, the intercept will be marked by that lightning error. That arrow will have a sign color if the descent mode is in managed mode and it will be in white color if the descent mode is a selected one, so vertical speed or opened descent. Now to some more interesting things on the NAF display. If you see a dashed green line, it means that the aircraft is actually in heading mode or track mode, and so it will not follow the FMS flight planned route. If you are currently modifying a flight plan, but have not inserted it into the flight plan, then you will see a yellow dashed line. A solid white line will depict the secondary flight plan. You will only see that line if you go into the MCDU, into the secondary flight plan menu and call up the routing there. And of course, if the routing is different to the one that you are um, currently having as your primary flight plan. If it's the same, uh, the green line will then be over the white line and you won't see it. Another color you will come across regarding the flight planned route is the cyan color and that simply depicts the missed approach procedure. Next up are the altitude constraint circles. If they are white, it means the constraint is not considered by the FMGC simply because you have a selected climb or descent mode, like vertical speed or open climb, open descent. If that circle is in magenta color, that means the constraint is predicted to be met and the aircraft being in a lateral and vertical managed mode. There is one more color. If it's orange, then the constraint is predicted to be missed. 
So in that situation, the aircraft is in a managed lateral and vertical mode. However, the FMGC will not be able to meet the altitude constraint given the current climb or descent rate. So the FMS is telling you, you need to do something, you need to intervene in order to have that constraint being met. While we're talking circles, another one you've come across is the so-called pseudo deceleration waypoint. And that's the indicated position where the aircraft will initiate an automatic uh, activation of the approach phase and hence a deceleration towards V approach. Now that will only work if the managed NAV mode and the managed speed mode are engaged. If they're not, the deceleration point is in white. Another symbol is a solid magenta dot and that signifies a speed change point. And that indicates the point on the routing where the aircraft will then initiate an automatic acceleration or deceleration from its current speed to the new computed speed in case of a speed limit, a speed constraint, holding speed, and also includes the speed 250 knots below level 100 or below 10,000 feet. Let's now look at some symbols on the NAF display. Here you can see some magenta um, circles, some with some lines on it. And these are NAF aids. There's a wide range of different NAF aid symbols. As you can see here, there's circles for TAC and DME, some crosses for just VWA without DME, some circles uh, with a line at the sides, uh, VWA DME, and then triangles showing NDBs. The color is also important, so if it's a green color, it says the NAF-8 is a current waypoint on the flight plan route. It's cyan if the NAF-8 is currently tuned, either manually or automatically. Um, if it's white, the NAF-8 is the two-way point on the routing. And if it's magenta in color, the NAF-8 is not part of the flight plan and is, is only displayed because you have pushed the dedicated uh, push button on the EFIS control panel. Okay, now we come to something which we don't find very often in our simulators. However, should this appear, the so-called energy circle, then at least you've heard about it. Um, this circle indicates the radius, which shows the required distance to land from the current aircraft position. It's available in the descent and approach phase, and also when the selected lateral mode is used, for example, heading. Okay, that's enough information for one video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have and you've not subscribed to my channel yet, I would appreciate you doing so. Also, please leave a like. That really helps this video. Until the next one, stay safe, everyone. Happy landings.